How to Fast and Pray The normal practice of people in the Bible and people in the early church was a practice of prayer and fasting. As you would open the Word of God and travel through the Scriptures, you are impressed with the fact that, repeatedly, the people of God fasted and prayed. Exodus 34, 28 And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Ezra 8, 21-23 Then I proclaimed a fast there, at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God, to seek of him a right way for us, and for our little ones, and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way because he had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him, but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. Isaiah 58, 6 Is not this the fast that I have chosen? to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Joel 2.12 Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. The men and women of this Bible fasted, for different reasons, but this doesn't seem to be the normal experience today. Even though our Lord Jesus expects us to fast. Matthew 6, 16 and 17 Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces. They may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. There is always a pattern for any spiritual practice that will be acceptable to God. Fasting is one of the spiritual activities which all believers must engage in. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 16 and 17 that when ye fast, not if ye fast. This implies that fasting is not optional for believers. However, when we engage in fasting and praying, there is an acceptable way to do it. Clearly, Jesus assumed that his followers would fast. Jesus did not say fasting is only for the preachers, the missionaries, the prophets, and the pastors. No, it is for every one of his followers. Jesus stated, first of all, that we should be careful not to fall victim of hypocrisy. One of the greatest factors that hinder the result of fasting and prayer is hypocrisy. Many people fast and pray so that they will be seen and honored by the people who see them. Once a person's motive for fasting or praying is to be accorded with the honor of people, such a person will never see the result of their fasting and prayer. Jesus is not against praying in public places, but the problem that he had with the Pharisees in his days was that they did so to be seen and respected for their long prayers. They wanted to be adored and admired for their spiritual efforts. They wanted people to look up to them. You may not know this, but you can do the right thing for the wrong reasons. Fasting is the right thing to do, but doing it so people can perceive you as Captain Super Saint is wrong. Fasting is a wonderful thing, but if you are doing it for the applause and adoration of other people, your reward will be just that.
The acceptable way to fast and pray is to go into your closet and deal directly with your heavenly Father without seeking for the recognition of men. God loves secret deals, so to say. He wants us to stay right with Him and take off our attention from all other things. When your full attention is towards God, He will honor your sacrifices. And when you fast and pray to God in the secret, He will reward you openly. If you fast and pray so that you will be recognized, truly, you will get such recognition. But that is all the reward you will get for your labor. If God rewards a person, he or she will be honored publicly. Fasting or praying for people to see you or honor you is not a good reason to do so. Rather, our entire focus should be on God. In Luke 18, 1 through 6, Jesus used the parable of the importunate widow to explain that prayer is a necessity for all believers. Not only are we mandated to pray as believers, we must pray always without ceasing. Jesus said we ought to pray at all times and not to faint. This means we cannot survive as believers without prayer. Prayer is a spiritual dialogue between a person and God. I would also call it the meeting point between humanity and divinity. When we pray, the earth aligns with heaven. God wants us to always come to the secret place where we communed with Him. He wants us to build Him an altar where He meets with us. As we begin to combine the effort of fasting with prayers, nothing will be impossible to us. Jesus told His disciples that there are certain problems that will defy solutions until we fast and pray. When Jesus set free a demon-possessed boy, the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. 21. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. The subject of fasting has several dimensions to it. For instance, John lived a good part of his life in the wilderness, living a fasted life. He was only eating locusts and wild honey. Fasting means to deny your flesh of certain pleasures so that you can be alive to the Spirit. It is necessary to fast because the more active your flesh is, the less active your spirit will be. So fasting helps us to put our bodies under subjection so that our spirit will become susceptible to the Holy Spirit. Many believers think that God will bless them and answer their prayers faster when they fast. But that is not actually what fasting does. God wants to bless us because He delights in our welfare. So fasting does not bring God to the notion of blessing us, but it helps us to align with the mind of the Spirit. In an attempt to get certain blessings from God, there are many believers that have done a great damage to their health by not being cautious. There is a correct way to fast and pray. It is good and very important for us to fast as believers. But we must not turn the discipline of fasting into the punishment of our bodies. I have seen people who have tried to go 40 days and 40 nights fasting simply because they read about Jesus' 40 days and 40 nights. Don't do that. You are only harming yourself. Unless God speaks to you directly and you are sure it is God, you are only wasting your time and abusing your body with hunger strike. Always remember that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Any damage you cause to it will affect your general service to God. Therefore, believers should be cautious and not unwise about the kind of fasting they will undertake. Isaiah 58 tells us the kind of fast that God approves for His people. Verses 6 and 7 reads, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? 
to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover them, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. The reason many people fast and pray, but do not receive answers to their prayers, have been summarized in the verses I've just read. God tells his people, if you want to fast the way that pleases me, begin with getting right with your brothers and sisters. Stop oppressing others and reach out to help others. Don't fast and pray when you are gossiping about others. Don't fast and pray when you are backbiting others. Don't fast and pray when you hold grudges against others. Anyone that fasts but does not show mercy to fellow humans cannot also receive the mercy of God. It is not enough to fast and pray. We must do these in the correct way. Isaiah 58, 6 and 7 shows us the kind of worship and fasting most acceptable to God. Lose the bonds of wickedness. Undo the heavy burdens. Let the oppressed go free. Break every yoke. First, they had to stop acting wickedly towards others. This means that getting right with God begins by stopping the evil we do toward others. You cannot be fasting to God and plotting evil to others. The verse continues on saying, Share your bread with the hungry. Cover, not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then they had to start acting lovingly towards others. This means that getting right with God continues by doing loving things for other people. 